Praise the Lord. If you are in for times of refreshing, I said, Praise the Lord. Say, My season of refreshing. You can say better than that. Refreshing will come to you. Renewal will come to you. Revival will come to you. Today, the river of God's blessing will flow your way. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your promise. And we thank you because of the great things you are doing already. Thank you for what you are going to do in every life today. All our members, all our ministers, our brothers and sisters, our youths, our students, our boys and girls, and all those who are here and everywhere, we're asking, Lord, you open the floodgates. And season of refreshing will come to everyone in Jesus' name. We're asking the Lord, the river of life the river of blessing and the river of great experience supernatural will flow everybody's way in Jesus name I'm asking that all the dryness will vanish away weariness will vanish away yokes will vanish away and all the deaths and the debris and all the things and all our lives that should not be there as the river will flow, as the rain will come, as the blessing will come. Lord, I pray there will be a cleansing for everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, everything we have cried about, everything that we have suffered today, there will be an end in Jesus' name. Bless your people today. And let the river flow to everyone. Season of refreshing for everyone. Confirm it, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And the headquarters church said, I'm reading to you from Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Think about that. One man in the world. One man in his family. One man in that dark age, Genesis time, that God said, how can I do this without telling my friend Abraham? Can I hide from Abraham? He was thinking about what to do. He was planning what to do. And he said, I'm not going to do this until I tell Abraham, the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. This has been transferred to you. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now look at the reason why. The reason why God said, what I do, what I plan, what I'm about to get done. Why I'm going to tell Abraham. And I'm not going to hide this from Abraham. For I know him, verse 19 that he will command his children. That's the reason why. And his household after him. That's the reason why. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they are done altogether according to the cry of each which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet 
before the Lord. Look at that. God had told Abraham, this is my plan. This is what I'm going to do. And the angels went to Sodom. But Abraham stood there before the Lord. What was he going to do? Look at verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous or the wicked? He began to commune with God. He began to pray unto God. I'm sure many of us know the content of the prayer. Come to chapter 19. In chapter 19, verse 27, And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Abraham made it a habit. No wonder that God said, I cannot hide from Abraham. I'm not going to hide from Abraham. I'm going to reveal to Abraham. I'm going to make a revelation to Abraham that I never make to any other person. And I can discuss this with Abraham. I can allow him to talk to me about it. And whatever we decide together, think about that. The great privilege of a man on earth coming so close to God, coming so much related unto the Almighty, that the Almighty God was willing to discuss what he was about to do, not just for one person, not just for one family, but for a whole nation or for a whole city. Look at verse 28. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. But look at verse 29. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God Tell me. He'll remember you. He has remembered you. Today is a day of remembrance. He remembers your life. He remembers what you are going through. He remembers your challenges. And today, the season of refreshing, like you have never known it. Deep and wide, great and mighty, unstoppable, will flow into your life in Jesus' name. God remembered Abraham and said, Lord, out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in the which Lord dwelt. Today we're talking about our daily refreshing in his presence. A lot happens. When you take hold of the privilege you have, the opportunity you have, and you're in constant fellowship for the Lord, always in the presence of the Lord. You know what Abraham did early in the morning? He made it a habit. He'll appear before the Lord. He'll have the family altar. He will instruct his whole household. And he touched them constantly, regularly, and frequently to the point they knew this is the mind of God. Please understand, there was no written Bible at that time. Please understand, there was no ministering pastor every Sunday, every week at that time. To Abraham, think about it. There was nobody to encourage him, to lift him up, to remind him, think about it. There's no such scripture at that time. Think about it. There were no books, Christian books, to read at that time. But Abraham, with the little knowledge that he had of the revelation of God, he made it a point of duty that every morning he will appear before the Lord. He'll serve the Lord. He'll worship the Lord. How much more? Those of us who are living today, I pray God will help you to develop this habit of coming to the presence of God. Now we have the Bible. Now we have 
helps of devotional reading that the church has provided. Now we have a songbook. Now we have recorded messages. We have a lot that can help us in a devotion unto the Lord. And from today, something new will begin in your life. I'm coming to Genesis chapter 28. In Genesis chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 12. Genesis chapter 28, and we're reading from verse 12. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on, uh, on the earth, and the top of it reached heaven, reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and of the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest to thee, will I give it unto thy seed. I thought somebody would say amen there. Amen. And thy seed, in verse 14, shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad, you will spread to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. What a great thing in the presence of God. What a great thing when you have time, when you make time, that God communes with you, and you commune with God. And then it goes on to say, and in thee. And in thy sea shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Your extended family will get this blessing through you. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee. Mark this in your Bible, for I will not leave thee. Look at this word, until. 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 Until the river flows, it will not leave you. Until this season begins in your life, it will not leave you. Until the power of God will break every yoke, until it will not leave you. Until the promises of God are fulfilled in your life, it will not leave you. Until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful, awesome, wonderful, frightening is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning. And Jacob, tell me, rose up early in the morning. I'm waiting for you. And Jacob rose up early in the morning. Make time. Make time. Create the time. Fellowship with God is a non-negotiable. It's not something that you can replace with another thing. Because a lot of problems in the day, in the week, in the month, in the year, in your future, they are solved at that time of morning devotion of the Lord. And the season of refreshing we're talking about continues to flow. Every blockage of blessing in your life is taken away at that time you are in friendship with God, fellowship with God, interaction with God, intimacy with God. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and put oil upon the top of it. Remember, remember, there's no reaching Bible. Remember, there's no reaching chapter of the Bible at that time. Remember, there's no tract. Remember, there's no Christian book. Remember, there was no Christian literature. Remember, there were no tapes. Remember, there was no internet. Remember, there was no pastor. Remember, there was no teacher. All he knew is that 
look at a place like this, a meeting with the Lord, and I'm going to worship the Lord. No revelation of this had come to them. Look at verse 19, and he called the name of that place Bezel. But the name of the city of that city was called Laws at the beginning. And Jacob, tell me, and Jacob, tell me, vowed a vow. At the time you meet with the Lord, you must make a commitment of your life to the Lord. It's not just give me, give me, give me. You're also saying, I give you, Lord. I surrender to you, Lord. My life, my future, my heart, my will. I surrender my obedience unto you. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, if God will be with me, God will be with you. And will keep me in this way that I go. All the ways to go, the Lord will keep you. And will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. You'll come back in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. Personal experience of the Lord. Then will the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will, tell me, I will give thee the tenth, give unto thee the ten. Was that because Moses wrote a law for him? I said, was that because Moses wrote a law for him? No, Moses was not even born yet. The old covenant was not even given yet. The law of Moses was not given yet. This was revelation directly from God. Before the giving of the law, he said, you'll be with me, you'll go with me, you'll bring me back, then you'll be my God, then I will serve you. And of all that you will give me, I will surely, without fail, give the tenth unto thee. For Jacob, running away from Esau, running away from a brother who became an enemy, running away from family pressure. For Jacob, going away, not sure of the future. This was the beginning, a moment of refreshing for him. He was leaving home for the unknown. He was forced to go out of the familiar surrounding to face an unfamiliar future. And then the Lord met him at such a time. This was the time when he was going on a journey to a strange place, a new place he had never thought of going through a strange path, alone and lonely. And ex his experience at this time became a session of refreshing that will lead to a season of refreshing. Think about his past and think about what had happened before this time. He was burdened and guilty. He was contemplative and convicted. It was contemplative, thinking about what I did, how I deceived my father, how I went the wrong way. And he was convicted. He was reflective and remorseful at this time before you slept. He was disturbed and saddened. He was separated and severed from the family. And he was severed from the fellowship and the friendship of Esau, his brother. His experience then at this time became a refreshing relief. The promise and assurance from God began a season of refreshing for him. And today will be the beginning, a new beginning for you. We need God, like Jacob needed God. We need this daily fellowship like Abraham and Jacob needed his daily fellowship. We need his assurance. And we cannot survive without him. Our daily refreshing in his presence. Three things we're going to look at before we pray. 
and the river will begin to flow. Somebody there said the river will begin to flow. Number one, the privilege of daily refreshing before the Lord. The privilege is a privilege. And we need to hold on to that privilege. The privilege of daily refreshing before the Lord. Number two, the power of divine revelation before the law, before the Mosaic law, before the old covenant, you know, the old law, that is Mosaic law, was eventually taken away, removed, out of the way. But the revelation they got before that law came, that still stands because they are not part of the law. Even though some of those things were incorporated into the law, when the law was taken away, destroyed, removed, taken out of the way, the revelation before the law still stood. Point number two, the power of divine revelation before the law. Number three, the proof of decisive response to his love. Abraham says, the love of God, I will not do anything except I reveal it to Abraham. He says that love. Jacob says, the love of God, I will go with you. I will be with you. I will not stop until I have fulfilled everything I promised you. He says, the love of God. The Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. He says, the love of God. And there was a decisive response to that love. The proof of decisive response in his love to his love. Point number one. Tell me number one there. The privilege of daily refreshing before the Lord. I'm coming back to Genesis chapter 28, Genesis chapter 28, and I'm reading here from verse 12. And he dreamed, and, be, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. The man had nothing. The man was afraid. The man had the threat of death upon him. Esau said, you will see. I seek a father is about to die. And when he's gone, that birthright you got, nothing will come out of it. All those blessings you got from father I seek, nothing will come out of it. What has your enemy said? All those things the enemies have said, they are canceled today. In verse 14, thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad. Don't mind Esau. Don't mind what he has said. Don't mind his threatening. He said, Esau said, that young man Jacob, he'll know that I'm a hunter, and I'm going to hunt his life down. It's a lie. Nobody will hunt your life down. On the contrary, you will spread to the west. You will spread to the east. You will spread to the north. And you will spread to the south. In thee and in thy sea shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, and behold, I am with thee. And will keep thee in all the places where thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee, 
until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. Newcomers who came in here today, I want to announce to you, the Lord is in this place. Yeah. Salvation is in this place. Yeah. Blessing is in this place. Yeah. The goodness of the Lord you have been looking for and you have been going here and there, I want to assure you this morning, the goodness of the Lord is in this place for you. Yeah. Members of the church, are the members there this morning? Ministers in the church. Are the ministers there this morning? You don't need to, you know, run here and run there and run there. I'm telling you, your season of repression is here in Jesus' name. Maybe you didn't know it. They said there's nothing like this there, nothing like this there, nothing like this there. Everything they are talking about, everything they are trying to publicize, everything is here for you. The Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid, and he said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. Where is the house of God? I said now, where is the house of God? Uh -huh. Why didn't you come last Thursday? You missed something uh, that Thursday. And then, uh, you are, this coming Thursday, you missed it the other time. You'll not miss this one. Somebody help me shout, total recovery. Total recovery. You know, with the time that the Lord will bless you, just to give those few hours on Thursday for this great river of revival that is flowing, that is flowing, you will be there. Young boy, young girl, the youths, are the youths here this morning? Let me hear your voice. Wonderful. Pastor is going to promise you something. I can't hear my children. This Thursday, you come. And you will see, this thing we're talking about, extra, extra opportunity, extra power, Pastor, you know my problem? God knows the problem. I've been trying to get this since I came out of school. I've been trying to get that. Didn't you hear that your time of recovery is now here? Everything that eluded you, everything that you miss, recovery. Children, don't mind. Am I all right to call you children? My children... Say total recovery. total recovery. Fathers and mothers, this coming Thursday, I'm telling you. I don't know, I don't want to tell you what I do in preparing for the Thursday, but I'm doing something. I'm concerned about you. God is concerned about your tears. God is concerned about all the problems you are going through. And once I make all the preparation, I dig deep, I say, those people, my people, they are coming. They're going to spread to the west. They're going to spread to the east. They're going to spread to the north. They're going to spread to the south. And the preparation is made, and I get revelation, and I have revelation for you, and then you are not there for me to deliver that revelation to you. You will be there. This coming Thursday, I will be there. The Lord confirm it in Jesus' name. Young people, don't forget, I said I was going to tell you something. We're going to have a special Sunday here that all papas and mamas will remain in their district. And just the young people, and just the young people, that Sunday, only the young people, and think about it, you will climb every mountain. You will cross every river. And everything that you have missed in the past will fill this place with only young people. You will seek. 
you will hear the word of God. We will pray. It will be a special day. And the gates and the windows of heaven will be opened unto you in Jesus' name. Now I'm talking to also the campus people. You know, sometimes when I say youth, uh, the campus people forget they're part of the youths as well. Campus people, your time has come. I said, your time has come. I read in the newspapers, they said this one got a first class, that one got first class, that one got first class. I'm wishing to know, where's that one coming from? Is that one of my children? They will be. I said, they will be. A new day. A new dawn. And then look at verse 18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning. And he took the stone that he had put for the pillows. And set it up for a pillar. And put oil upon it. And he called the name of the place Bethel. But the name of that place was called Laws at the first your situation will change. Your life will have a new name. Your profession will have a new description. Your progress will be totally new in Jesus' name. Spending time in God's presence through prayer and in His Word daily refreshes our lives. Life without His Word is worrisome. Life without his voice is vague and vain. Life without his truth is troublesome. Life without his fellowship is frightening. Life outside his presence is perilous. Life outside his will is a wasted life. And life without his revelation is ruinous. It's refreshing when you come to the presence of God. It's enlightening when you come to the presence of God. It's encouraging when you come to the presence of God. It's empowering when you come to the presence of God. What strength will receive? It is strengthening when you come to the presence of God. It is rewarding. It is profitable to spend good quality time in devotion. And in fellowship with God every day. You've heard about this, but you shouldn't be tired about hearing of what Jesus did. And he has left an example for you and for me in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. It tells us in verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while. In the morning, rising up a great while before day. That takes some denial. You might have to set your alarm clock. If you are not used to that, you, might, you must have to set the time and the period that I need to begin the day with the Almighty God so that His power, His revelation, His truth will flow into my life. He said, He rose up early in the morning, a great while before day. And he went out and he departed into a solitary place, a quiet place, a conducive place, a place where you can hear the Lord, a place where you can read the word with good light, a place where you can concentrate and all the distractions are, no more, are not there. And it says, and there prayed. Look at chapter 6, Mark. Chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 30. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. At the time when you have fellowship with the Lord, is to tell him all about your life, the good and the bad, the desirable and the undesirable the uh, good things and then the mistakes. You tell the Lord about everything. They told him all they had done. They told him all they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place 
and rest a while. It's a time of resting in the presence of the Lord. A time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. A time of upliftment in the presence of the Lord. Come ye yourselves apart before you come apart. Before you disintegrate. Before stress. Before distress. Because you are, before you are overwhelmed with all the problems of life, come apart. Take time and come apart unto the Lord. It says, for there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, and I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40. And we're looking at verse 28. Has thou not known, you will know. Has thou not heard, you will hear. That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. You understand your situation? You understand your predicament? You understand your desires? You understand your, your, pro, your, your plans? You understand what he created you for? And it is that time when you come in the presence of God, he begins to open up to you. He says, there's a chapter where you are now in your life. This should be the next chapter. This should be the next thing. He understands everything. And he says, even the youth shall fade and be weary. Our youths will not faint. Our youths will not be weary. If you are there, you want to have strength. You are a young man, young woman there. Amen. <laughs> and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, there are people that are always rushing and rushing and rushing. In the morning, they rush out. They don't have any time for God. They have time for trouble. They have time for trial. They have time for the heat. They have time for, you know, going to meet enemies. They have time for all the problems. They don't have time for the solution to their problem. You will have time. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not fade. That's what the Lord does for us when we understand that we're to wait upon the Lord. Look at Job chapter 23. In Job chapter 23, I'm reading from verses 11 and 12. Job chapter 23. Verses 11 and 12. My foot has held its steps, and its way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his leaves. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Amen. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my, tell me, necessary food. Now, when it says necessary food there, it's talking about all the things my body needs. All the things I go out for. The work is for the food. Salary is for the food. Going to the office is for the food. Going to the market is for the food. Taking a journey and then coming back is for the food. Everything we're doing is to get enough food to eat and something to live by, to live on. And it says, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food, more than all the things that people are running after to get food. I esteem, I exalt, I value the words of his mouth. And I pray God will give us that same conviction in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 11. Acts 17, verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. 
in that they receive the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures. How often? Daily, whether those things were so. That means they are not only hearing the Bible in the fellowship. They are not only hearing the Bible when an apostle, a prophet, a preacher, a pastor was teaching them on their own. It says they searched, they read, they examined the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. It's a privilege the Lord has given us every day, and it's the thing that opens the floodgate of revival, of renewal, and of refreshing to every life. And I pray, if you have not been doing it, we'll forget the past. I said we'll forget the past. And then something new, a new decision. And then a new direction of your life. And a new demonstration of the power of God in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the power of divine revelation before the law. Before the law came, the people at the time of Genesis, they had revelation. Revelation. You see, there are many people they don't understand that. And they don't understand all those revelations that God gave in Genesis before the law. They are apart from the law of Moses. They are not canceled with the law of Moses. And people don't realize that. They read something, they say, that's law of Moses. That's law of Moses. That's the law of Moses. But look at this, the revelation he gave concerning himself. Divine, the power of divine revelation before the law. We're coming to Genesis chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 13. Genesis chapter 28, verse 13. It says, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest to thee, will I give it and to thy seed. Look at verse 16. And Jacob awaked out of sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Number one, there was revelation concerning God. You see, those people in Genesis, they were no atheists. They were not people that were doubting, is there God? Is there no God? There was revelation. Number one, revelation of God. Number two, revelation of grace and mercy. We're looking at Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 16. Genesis chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 16. Look at this. 19, 16. While he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand and the hand of his wife. At the hand of his two daughters, the Lord be merciful, merciful, merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Verse 19, now, behold now, thy servant has found, tell me, tell me out aloud, grace in thy sight. Number two, there was revelation of grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. That one was before the Lord. And when the law was canceled, grace still remained. Mercy still remained. Number three, there was revelation concerning righteousness. Revelation concerning righteousness. Look at chapter 15, Genesis chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 6 
and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for, tell me, righteousness. That's not self-righteousness. It's the righteousness that came by faith. He believed the Lord. He believed the promise of the Lord. He believed the mercy of God. He believed the grace of God. He believed the free, abundant provision of the Lord. And it says, it was counted unto him for righteousness. There was revelation of righteousness. And so, when the law passed away, the righteousness did not pass away. By faith, by faith, we still have righteousness in the Lord. Number four, they had revelation of idolatry forbidden. Idolatry forbidden. And when it says, thou shalt have no other gods before me, yes, that was in the law. But when the law passed away, that is still there because it was revealed before the law. By looking at Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35, I'm reading from verse 1, and God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God, that appeared unto thee when thou fledest from the face of Esau thy brother. And Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, put away tell me, the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. You see that revelation? There was revelation that idolatry was forbidden. And so it's not just the law of Moses. Yes, the law of Moses came later. But there had been this revelation before the law of Moses. Number five, revelation of Adultery forbidden. Adultery forbidden. We're looking at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. You remember the law? Thou shalt not commit adultery. But, you know, the revelation had been there before the law came. And so, when the law was cancelled, the revelation that had been before the law still remained. Look at this in Genesis chapter 39. And I'm reading here from verse, uh, from verse 7. It says in verse 7, And it shall come to pass, and, and it came to pass after these six, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, and then he goes on to say in verse 8, But he refused. You will refuse. I said you will refuse. And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master knoweth not what is not what is with me in the house. He has committed all that he has to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then? Can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? It was revelation to them back in Genesis before the law came. Adultery forbidden. Number six, murder, killing another person. Forbidden. Forbidden. Genesis chapter 9. In Genesis chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 6. Genesis chapter 9. Verse 6, you see, all these things were before the law. And when the law came, some of them were put into the law. And now the law was taken away. The law annulled, disannulled, cancelled, abrogated. Because the new covenant has now come. But the revelation that had been there before the law came, that revelation still stands. Look at uh, chapter 9, verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood... By man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Murder was forbidden. Number seven, there was revelation of conditional security. Conditional security. That means after you are saved, you are saved after you are born again, the Lord doesn't want you to look back or to go back. 
I mean, once that if you look back and if you go back, there's perdition there in uh, chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 17. Chapter 19, verse 17. The revelation on conditional security. It says in chapter 19, Genesis, verse 17, and it came to pass when they brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. They had already received grace, they received mercy. And the Lord sent angels to them in answer to the prayer of Abraham. And they came out of the city of destruction. And then they told them, look not behind thee. Look at verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him. And she became what? A pillar of salt. After salvation. After salvation. After deliverance. I mean, after being taken out. But because she didn't keep to the covenant, to the commandment, became a pillar of salt. There was revelation concerning judgment. We're coming to chapter 18. In chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 23. Genesis chapter 18, verse 23. They had revelation that God will judge sin. God will judge the sinner. Look at chapter 18, verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou destroy the righteous or the wicked? Paradventure, there shall be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner. To slay the righteous with the wicked, that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Look at this. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You are the judge of all the earth. You will do right. You will spare the righteous. You will destroy. You will punish the wicked. They had revelation on judgment. They had revelation on healing and miracles before, uh, through prayer. Revelation on healing and miracles for, uh, through prayer. You see, it is not just after, after Moses that now they understood about healing. Look at uh, chapter 18. Look at chapter 18, verse 14. Is there any sin to hurt for the Lord at this at the time appointed, I will return unto thee, it will return unto you. According to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son, a miracle will take place. I said a miracle will take place. Look at chapter 20, chapter 20. I'm reading here from verse 7. Chapter 20, verse 7. It says, now therefore... Restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. He shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. New life has come to you today. Look at verse 17, verse 17. And so Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech. See that in Genesis, there was revelation about healing and miracles. Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maid servants, and they bear children. Looks like all your household is going to receive miracle today. And then number 10, there was 
guidance in marriage. Guidance in marriage. You know, maybe there's somebody there thinking that, you know, they're seeking the will of God in marriage, uh, having been guided in marriage. That is the law. And now the law has been taken away. And now you can go to the site, you go to the street, and anybody you like, you just speak, you don't need any guidance. You understand? This guidance in marriage, it was revealed from the time of Genesis. Look at uh, chapter 24. Genesis, everything we're looking at in this point is Genesis. Genesis chapter 24. I'm looking at verse 3. And I will make this way by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of, of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. There will be no unequal yoke. And Abraham was seeing the revelation of God for the marriage of Isaac. And for the marriage of anyone that says, I know the Lord, is that there will be no unequal yoke. And then you look at verse 6. In verse 6, and Abraham said unto him, Beware thou, that, beware thou, that thou bring not my son. See that again. Look at verse 7. The Lord, God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, which spake unto me. That, and that swear unto me, saying unto thy seed, will I give this land, and he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife for my son from this. He shall send his angel before thee. He will guide you. He will guide you. Are you there? I said he will guide you. Look at verse 40, chapter 24, verse 40. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Look at verse 48. In verse, let's come back to verse 27. Verse 27, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not let destitute my master of his, tell me, mercy, and of his, tell me, truth. I, being in the way, the Lord led me. I, being in the way, the Lord led me. Genesis, the revelation that he showed his people back in Genesis that in marriage there is guidance. Young people, God will lead you. Look at verse 48. And I bowed down my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. Let me in the right way. Number 11, what was there in Genesis that the law cannot cancel because the law came 430 years after and these had been settled as revelation before the coming of the law. Number 11, obedience, obedience to God. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, uh, the taking away of the Mosaic law does not cancel obedience to God because that thing had been divine revelation before the law. Genesis chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 16. In Genesis 22 verse 16, it says, And, and search by myself have I sworn, says the Lord, because thou hast done this sin, and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. You need a greater amen than that one. Look at verse 18, verse 18, and in thy seed, this is wonderful, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed 
reach the latter the last part of that verse 18 up because 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 obedience to God because thou hast obeyed my voice number 12 there was tithes and offering tithes page unto God we're looking at uh, chapter 14 we're looking at Genesis chapter 14 again this one tithes a taste of our income going unto God going for the service of God for the worship of God it had been revealed in Genesis and whatever came during the law when the law is cancelled was cancelled this one that was there before the law that one still remained chapter 14 I'm reading here from verse 18 chapter 14 verse 18 and make you say the king of Salem brought forth bread and wine isn't that what the Lord has done for us as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, the Lord Jesus Christ, the high priest made like unto uh, the, unto uh, this, you know, make his make make like, made like unto the Son of God, our high priest. It says, and it was the priest of the Most High God, and he blessed him, the Lord will bless you. And he said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. They had the revelation at that time. And the revelation is still there today that God is the possessor of heaven and earth. And he said, Blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thy hands. And tell me the rest. And tell me out aloud. He gave him tithes of all, not because of the law of Moses. Moses was not yet born. This took place far back in Genesis. Revelation, divine revelation before the law. We're coming to chapter 28. Chapter 28, and I'm reading from verse 20. Chapter 28, we're reading from verse 20. It tells us here in chapter 28, verse 20, And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, thank God he is with you, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, you will not die of hunger. Famine will not come your way. Abundance will come your way. Surplus will come your way. Prosperity will come to you in Jesus' name, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. You see your God? I said, you see your God? He will not disappoint you. And I look at the vow, look at the vow, and this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house, and of all that God shall give me, of all that God shall give me, of all that God shall give me, I will surely give, tell me, the taste unto thee. That was revelation before the coming of the law. Number 13, there was love and forgiveness. Love and forgiveness. Somebody has offended you. And he's asking for forgiveness. You forgive him. Why? It's been the revelation before the time of the law. We're looking at Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50. I'm reading from verse 17. Genesis chapter 50, verse 17. So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive. I pray thee now the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servant, of the servants of the of the God of thy father. And, and Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not. For am I in, God, in the place of God? As for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring it to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Verse 21, now therefore fear ye not, that means I forgive you, 
all your enemies will forgive you. And you will forgive everyone who has offended you. Forgiveness is revelation from before the time of the law. It's not because, you know, the law came and so now I have to forgive them because of the law. No, before the law. It says in verse 21, Now therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you. He will nourish you. And your little ones, and he comforted them and spake how kindly unto them. You see, before the coming of the law, they believed in angels. It's not just because of the law. And the angel brought the law unto the children of Israel through Moses. Not because of that. They believed in angels. It was divine revelation. I'm looking at chapter 19. Chapter 19. And I'm reading from verse 1. Chapter 19. Reading from verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lord seeing them rose up uh, to meet them and he bowed himself with his face to the ground and then we read from verse 15 in verse 15 it says and when the morning arose then the angels hastened Lord angels already appeared to them and they knew there were angels they were not doubting are there angels are there not angels it was divine revelation before the Lord and then it tells us in, uh, this is uh, now chapter 49. I'm looking at chapter 49. They believed in prophecy. They believed in prophecy. Because uh, that was revelation before the law. Chapter 49, I'm reading from verse 1. And Jacob called unto, unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you, that I may tell you, that which will befall you in the last days. In the last days. I'm going to tell you something. It's not for today. It's not for tomorrow. It will befall you. It will come to you in the last days. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, and they, in, that's chapter 49, reading from verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Or no, a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. That's the Messiah. Prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. They, read, they believed in prophecy. They believed in the rapture. They believed in the rapture. The rapture had been revealed before even the law of Moses came. We're looking at uh, chapter 5. Uh, chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 22. Chapter 5, uh, I'm reading from verse 22. It says there in chapter 5, uh, verse 22, And Enoch walked with God. After he begat, we to say that. 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Look at verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Did he die? I said, Did Enoch die? What happened to him? Rapture, rapture. They believed in the rapture even before the coming of the law. Number 17, if you're counting, they believed in heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prayer, a place for you. Thank God I'm going to heaven. I say, thank God I'm going to heaven. Somebody there is not ready, is not wanting to go to heaven. Thank God I'm going to heaven. You will be there. I'll see you there. Where are you? You'll see me there. We'll be there in Jesus' name. They believed in heaven. Look at it. Look at it here. It says in chapter 28. Chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 17. Chapter 28, verse 17. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. This is, tell me, this is, tell me, they believed in heaven. Where you hear about salvation, that's the gate of heaven. Where you hear about holiness, that's the gate of heaven. 
where you can pray and God will forgive all your sins. That's the gate of heaven where God reveals himself in fullness unto you in the house of God. That's the gate of heaven. Number 18, they believed in God's eternal faithfulness. They believed in God's eternal faithfulness. Look at chapter 21, Genesis chapter chapter 21, and I'm reading from verse 33. Genesis chapter 21, verse 33, and Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, what kind of God? The eternal God, eternal God, the eternal faithfulness of God. I read all that to you from Genesis for you to understand that the cancellation of the Mosaic law does not affect all these revelations before the law. As God revealed himself, he's still revealing his divine requirement to us today. As we fellowship with him every day and we fellowship in his word. Point number three, as God revealed himself to these people, and they saw his love, they responded to his love. And what was the expression of their response to the love of God? Point number three, the proof of decisive response to his love. The proof of his decisive response to his love. How did they respond? How did they prove, God, your love means so much? And I'm responding to your love. Look at the expression of that love. We're reading from Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, that's the king of peace, the prince of peace, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God, which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And because of the victory he won, look up here, that was the first recorded war in history. Before this Genesis chapter 14, there's no other recorded war. This was the first recorded war. And then Abraham got all the servants born in his house. And he went after the confederacy of those kings. And he overcame like you are going to overcome. And he conquered like you are going to conquer. And he had the victory over all the enemies of the confederacy and the conspiracy like you are going to have the victory. And because of that love of God towards him, he now responded in the love of God in verse, uh, in verse 20 there. And he says, and he gave him, tell me, tithes of all. Look at chapter 28. In chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 18, the proof of decisive response to his love, to God's love. Look at it once again, chapter 28, verse 20, and Jacob vouched a vow. He said, I'm not going to be ungrateful. I'm going to respond to the love of God. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in, the, in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, do you have raiment to put on? Oh, you are looking so good this morning. Do you know you are looking so good? Where are you? Who gave you what you put on? And food to eat. Who gave you the food you are eating? He said, if God will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, he'll give you more. He'll supply all your needs in Jesus' name so that I come again to my father's house in peace. The peace of God will never leave your heart. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, tell me, say it like you will do it. 
Say it as your response to the love of God. I will surely give the thanks unto thee. You see, that is the love of God that prompts us to say, I'm going to offer something to the Lord and nothing less than a thanks. Second Samuel chapter 24. Second Samuel chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 24. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. And the king said unto Alana, Nay, but I will surely buy each of thee at a price. Neither will I offer bond offering unto the Lord my God of that which cost me nothing. I'm not going to offer something cheap before the Lord. I'm not going to offer something that is not of value before the Lord. I'm not going to offer something that is worthless and valueless, something that is priceless, something that I need myself. I'm going to offer unto the Lord. I will not offer that which costs me nothing unto the Lord. In First Chronicles chapter 29, First Chronicles chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 10. The, our response to the love of God, our gratitude expressed before the Lord because what he has done for us. First Chronicles chapter 29, reading from verse 10, it says, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. How long is he your father? Thine, in verse 11, thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All in heaven, all on earth, everything belongs to you. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all, both riches and honor. Come of thee, thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it, it is to make great and to give strength unto all. It says the strength you have came from the hand of God. The greatness you have came from the hand of God. The prosperity you have came from the hand of God. The strength you have, the substance you have, everything came from the Lord. And as a result of that, in gratitude unto him, as a result of that, the decisive response to his love, that's what you are giving to the Lord. And it goes on to say in verse 13, Now therefore our God will thank thee, you will thank God. And praise thy glorious name. But who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly what we offer to the Lord in response to his love, in response to his mercy, in response to his grace, in response to all those heavenly things he has given unto us. He says, so willingly we offer after this sword, for all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee, of thine own have we given thee. A tenth is almost negligible. And then nine over ten is on your side. One over ten is on his side. That's the least you can give. That's the smallest that you can give. It says, after all, of thine own have we given unto thee. For we are strangers before thee and sojourners. As were all our fathers, our days on the earth as a shadow. And there is none abiding, O oh Lord our God, O oh Lord our God, all this storm that we have prepared to, to build thee and house for thine holy name, comes of thine hand, and it's all thine. Even that things were given to the Lord, it belongs to the Lord. And he said, it is all thine. We're only, re we're only returning, only one taste and more. Maybe you, you want to return 20%, you want to return 30%. After all, for um, Zacchaeus, it was 50%. Half of my goods I give to the poor. And if you could give that to the poor, how much more will he give unto God? I pray God will give you a grateful heart. I have a grateful heart. 
Somebody there, I have a grateful heart. Malachi chapter 3. In Malachi chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Into the storehouse. This is not talking of the poor. It's not talking go to the street and give the tithes uh, to them in the street. It said, bring ye. I mean, I mean, how much part of the tithes? Church, I said, how much of the tithes? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Remember, all this began from Genesis. Remember, it began before the time of the law. And prove me now their ways, says the Lord, says the Lord, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. God is going to pour out. I say God is going to pour out. The rain of blessing will begin to fall upon your life. He'll pour out a blessing that you'll not have enough room to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Did you hear him in there? Yes. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all the nations shall call you blessed. Personal, 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 and all my neighbors shall call me blessed. Say that again, and all your neighbors shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. It will happen. Luke chapter 6. In Luke chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. It says in verse 38, it says, Give, and shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press now. Shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure, as ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Give me a good amen. First Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. Upon the first day of the week. When is the first day of the week? I said, when is the first day of the week? Today. You see, we're not talking about the law of Moses. We're talking about what God had revealed in Genesis before the law came. And now that the law is taken away, that revelation before the law came is still standing today upon the first, first day of the week. Let how many people let how many people, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. That's proportion. That's percentage. As God has prospered him. You have a little, bring a proportion. At least one tenth. You have more, bring a proportion. At least one tenth. You can go to, you know, two over ten. You can go to three over ten. You can go to five over ten. You can, you can raise it higher. But as God has prospered, let every one of you lay by him in store. As God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. We're coming to Second Corinthians chapter 8. Second Corinthians chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 1. Your time of blessing has arrived. It's going to be a time of the overflowing of the river of blessing upon your life in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do to which you, we do you to which of the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty, their deep poverty, they were poor, yet they are bounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power, I 
their record. Yea, beyond their power. They were willing of themselves. It wasn't forced on them. They had the revelation from within. Praying us, pleading with us, with much entreating that we would receive of the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, look at this, not as we hoped, but first they gave their own selves to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord. They gave their own selves by the will of God. You will of God, you will do the will of God. In gratitude, Abraham, Jacob, and many others responded to God's love. They gave much to God, starting with a tenth of their possession, a tenth of their income. God has given us the Sunday begotten Son. He has given us salvation. He has given us eternal life. He has given us abundant life. He has given us inheritance in heaven. He has given us revelation. Indeed, he has given us all things. As they were responsive to the love of God, and they showed that response by giving a taste of what they possess, nothing is too much to give back to God in response to his love for us. And this will begin, this will begin our season of refreshing. Mine has begun. I said, mine has begun. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us. In our giving, the love of Christ constraineth us. In our response to heaven, the love of Christ constraineth us. In giving a tithe, in giving an offering, in going beyond a tenth, the love of Christ constraineth us. Because with us judge that if one died for all, then what that day which live should not henceforth live unto themselves no selfishness anymore no stinginess anymore we open and we give unto god willingly cheerfully liberally and then it's the recognition of the love he has had for us and then he says but unto him that died for them and rose again you'll be a giver I said, you'll be a giver. I will be a giver. Let me hear your voice. And now, your season of refreshing. Somebody there, I said, your season of refreshing. Abundant blessing. Wonderful blessing. Untold blessing. More than you are asking for, the Lord will give in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 34, I'm reading from verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. You need to open your Bible because this verse, you begin to see the fulfillment. I said you begin to see the fulfillment. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. There shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. Today, there shall be showers of blessing. Upon you, my brother, upon you, my sister, upon you, my daughter, upon you, my son, there shall be showers of blessing. Yeah. Chapter 36, Ezekiel 36, verse 11. And I will multiply upon you, man and beast. Multiplication. Multiplication. And they shall increase and bring forth fruit. I was waiting for an amen. And I will settle you. You want to be settled in college? You'll be settled. You'll be settled in a job? You're going to be settled. You'll be settled in a family? You're going to be settled. You want to be settled in that profession? You're going to be settled. 
and I will settle you after your old estate and will do better. Better than your prayer. Better than your request. Better than your expectation. And I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Ye shall know, you will know. When will you know? Rise up and tell the Lord, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. And you will know. You will know that I am the Lord your God. You will know I am the Lord your God. It's the time of refreshing. It's the time of blessing. It's the time of abundance. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. And you will know the time to know. The time has come. The time to realize that time has come. The time to possess that time has come. Understand? There's grace and mercy available for you. There is forgiveness available for you. There's salvation available for you. There is cleansing available for you. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be forgiven, shall be redeemed. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. He'll deliver you this your time, this your time, the time of refreshing. The session of refreshing, the season of refreshing, a beginning right now, right now, right now. Tell the Lord, open your mouth, what do you want? Why have you come? Of the promises the Lord has made, which one are you claiming today? Which one are you receiving today? Multiplication of your joy, multiplication and increase of the goodness of God upon your life, multiplication of the victory. And the dominion that you have, multiplication, multiplication of the overflowing, overflowing river of the goodness of God in your life. It's there, it's there. This is your day. This is your time. The time of refreshing. The session of refreshing. The season of refreshing. Tell the Lord. Abundance in your life, grace in your life, mercy in your life, forgiveness, salvation, freedom, liberty, liberation, the breaking of yoke, everything. He loves you and he says, I'm not going to leave you until, until, until I have done that which I told you of. He's told you about salvation. He'll not leave you until it's done. He's told you about holiness, righteousness. He's going to leave you until it's done. He's told you about the power, the power to overcome. It's not going to leave you until it's done. He's told you about healing, about miracle. Is anything too hard for the Lord? It's not going to leave you until it's done. It's told you about joy unspeakable. Joy overflowing. It's not going to leave you on it until it's done. It's told you about providing for you. And I'll do better unto you. Better unto you. Then at your beginning, it's going, not going to leave you until it is done. Respond to that love of God. Lord, I accept. Lord, I believe. Accept. Believe the promise of God. And believe and accept the provision of the Lord. And understand, this is a new beginning for you. A new session for you. A new season for you. The season of refreshing. The season of the overflowing miracle and power of God in your life. Make a commitment to the Lord. That's what they did when they responded to his law. A vow before the Lord. 
consecration before the Lord, the giving and the surrender and the abandoning of yourself unto the Lord. That's what they did in decisive response to the love of God. You read his word, decide that. You pray to the Lord, decide that. You fellowship with the Lord, decide that. You have that daily commitment to devotional life, prayer, and the reading of the word, decide that. A decisive response. If God has done so much, if God has given so much, if God has revealed so much, a decisive response to this love of God. A decisive response to this goodness of God. And Abraham gave tithes of all. And Jacob vowed tithes of all. Their response, their response to the love of God for them. Show your gratitude. Show your love. Show your joy of being into the of belonging to the Lord. And respond, and respond to that love by the giving of your time, the giving of your money, the giving of yourself, the giving of your service, the giving of your skill, willingly, cheerfully, joyfully unto the Lord. I'm being in fellowship with the Lord every time. Good relationship with the Lord every time. Love to obey the Lord every time. I love to go in the direction of the Lord every time. Joyfully serving the Lord. Joyfully responding to the Lord. You appreciate his salvation? Show it. You appreciate his goodness? Show it. You appreciate his revelation? Show it. You appreciate his fellowship? Show it. And you understand? It's revealing more to us today. Because now he's giving us the whole Bible. More than he revealed unto Abraham. More than he revealed unto Jacob. And when they received that revelation, and he knew that this was a special privilege, they showed, they demonstrated, they proved the sincerity of their love and gratitude and appreciation. Expect his blessing. Expe express your faith. That Lord, I know a faithful God, as you said, you will do. And you said the better time has come. I believe. I receive. Season of refreshing. Season of multiplied blessing.
In Jesus' name we pray. If I tell you something, will you believe? I said, if I tell you, forget about other people. If I tell you something, will you believe? God has answered your prayer. Those tears are wiped away. That sorrow is taken away. That dryness is taken away. I don't have, I don't have, that has gone. Now you have. Now you possess. And the blessing of the Lord will never stop in your life. In Jesus' name. Your day of blessing has come. Say, my day of blessing has come. The session of renewal has come. My season of refreshing has come. I accept. I accept. The rivers are going to flow into your life. Rivers of blessing are going to flow into your life. If you accept, raise up that hand. If you know it's happened, raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we accept your blessing. We accept your miracle. We accept your power. We accept the provision. And Lord, I pray, every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, the blessings, or the blessings of the Almighty God begin to flow, begin to flow, begin to flow into every life in Jesus' name. The joy of sins forgiven, the joy of salvation, the joy of victory, the joy of a new life, the joy of a new day, and the joy of the beginning of seasons of refreshing upon your life in Jesus' name. The tears of the past wiped away. Sorrows of the past wiped away. And oh Lord, I pray every body and every yoke and every problem taken away from them in Jesus' name. Salvation for every soul. Conversion of every life. Grace for everyone. Forgiveness for everyone. The tangible manifestation of your presence in every life in Jesus' name. The spirit to conquer. The spirit to overcome. And the spirit to climb every mountain before them. Give unto them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you multiply your blessing in every life. Every good desire, every good thing they have asked of you, confirm it right now in Jesus' name. More, 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 more than how they can pray. More than what they can ask. More than what they can lay hold on. Give everyone, everyone, everyone more in Jesus' name. Let the rivers begin to flow. Let the rivers begin to flow. Let the rivers begin to flow. And your joy will be unlimited in Jesus' name. Receive. 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 The windows of heaven be opened upon you. And your life be enriched. And your life be strengthened. No sickness will hinder you anymore. No weakness will hinder you anymore. And no kind of past failure will hinder you anymore. Go forth and swim in the river of the blessing of God. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. It is confirmed. In Jesus' name we pray. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. It is done. I see the refreshing upon your life already. 
refreshing, refreshing. Go back home, the Lord has answered your prayer.